Hey everybody, welcome back to Creating Scenery for Microsoft Flight Simulator using free resources as always, as much as I can. Uh, we continue our discussion and series about parallax occlusion. Uh, last time I showed you a non-parallax way of creating a 3D room without actually modeling uh, everything in the room, just using some textures. Um, today we are going to talk about the parallax uh, material that is available in the Sobo exporter for Blender. And I'm going to show you how you can make a simple uh, parallax um, occlusion that the exporter auto automatically creates the the node set and all that kind of stuff all right now previously i was gonna i was thinking about uh talking about the different node setups for parallax in blender but i kind of kind of second guessed that because um it would be long and drawn out, longer than most of my videos. So um, I'm going to try to simplify and use the Asobo exporter to show you how to do a parallax window. Okay. So today's exercise, we're going to be using Blender and we're also going to use Krita. And then we'll bring our window into the sim. All right, so let's get started. I'm in Blender, so I'm going to select all with the A. And we're just going to delete everything. And I'm going to come over here to the collection. And I'm going to call this parallax window. Sorry. <laughs> so call this collection parallax window and inside that collection I'm going to shift a and we're going to add a plane we are going to make that plane let's make it eight meters by eight meters all right and let's uh, rotate that on the X I think rotate X 90 whoops 90 yeah that's right all right and then we're gonna move that up GZ for half that distance so it's sitting on the ground and I'm simply going to go to object apply all transformations okay now we have our uh, plane that we're going to put our image on. And before I do that, I want to go and right click and no, I don't. I want to go into edit mode, select our face, right click, unwrap face. Okay. So if we come over here to the object data properties, the little green triangle, and I go to UV maps, we have a UV map, okay? But for parallax to work, it actually needs two UVs. So all I'm going to do is simply hit the plus and add a UV um, map an additional one but they're exactly the same so if I can if I go into UV editor and I select the second one you notice nothing changes alright so they're they're duplicates of each other okay now we're going to add a material that is going to do the parallax for us all right so 
I'm going to go to the materials and I'm going to go new and we're going to call this new room and let's call it uh, let's call it living living room or living doesn't matter all right so I have a new material called living and we're going to come down here to the MSFS parameters and we are simply going to select parallax. Okay. Now, some settings for the parallax. We are going to scroll down here. You can do double sided if you wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to do one side. And we're going to come down to the parallax scale. We're going to make that 0.8. Okay, and f for the textures, I want behind the glass texture. That's going to be a texture of our room. All right, so I'm going to open and I'm going to go into our textures folder. I think that's our textures folder. Yep, that's our textures folder. And here's that blue room we used in the last video. And that's a 2K image. So I'm going to select that. And notice that it's in a, it's, it's not the one that I split out into its pieces parts. This is the raw perspective view with one single vanishing point. Okay, it's just a simple image I got, got off of the internet. 2K image and I'm going to open up that image into the behind the glass all right now I want to turn on my uh, viewport shading for the materials okay and notice we're kind of transparent in that way and we're opaque on that way because I only have it set for one-sided all right now we need to create our image for glass and that we're going to use Krita. All right, so we're going to open up Krita and we're going to create a new file and I'm going to make it 2K. Uh, I, do K, I use 2K a lot, so that's what it's left off. So I have 2048 square and I'm going to create a new image. Now, we want to give the glass some color. So I have, by default, it always creates a new layer for me when I create a new image. And we're going to come down here to the uh, rectangular select tool with our paint layer. And I'm going to make a box around that. And don't worry about being outside of the box. It's only going to color what's inside the actual image the white part here and I'm going to choose a color I've made a green window before but on this one we are going to make a different color let's see sometimes we have brown windows right so I'm going to choose a brown window okay and I'm going to hit OK. So brown is my active color. I'm going to come down to the fill bucket. And I'm going to change the opacity to 50%. Or whatever opacity that you want your glass to be. Okay. Then I'm simply going to drop in that color. It's kind of gray because it's 50% opacity and it doesn't look opaque right now because it has a white background so I'm going to go to select deselect to close off our mask and I'm going to turn off the background and now we have kind of a translucent uh, brown all right the next step is I need to export this out to a PNG. So I'm going to export and I'm in my model lib texture folder. See there's my green glass. 
Uh, I have a 1K version and I have a 2K, but we're going to make a brown glass. And so we're going to go brown glass. And this is a 2K image, so I'm going to put a 2K at the end so I always know. And save and accept the default compression. All right. Now, the reason I made the opacity 50% in my color for Krita is because the window glass on a parallax uh, material, if you remember when we used the MSFS parameter for glass, if you manipulate the alpha channel uh, for anything less than one, that determines the percent of translucency or transparency. However, for the parallax material, for a parallax window, you actually use the transparency of the image that you've created. So that's why we did a 50% opacity in Krita and then save that out as a PNG. So we're done for, with Krita for now. Now let's go back into Blender. And in Blender, we are simply going to come over here to our front glass color. And we're going to click and open. And we are going to go into our textures folder. And here's our brown glass. I'm going to select our brown glass and image open. And if you notice that the um, background kind of disappears in the, in the viewport, that's pretty normal, okay? We don't get a preview in Blender. You do in 3D Max, but you don't in Blender. So you have to wait until you're in the sim to see if it works, unfortunately, okay? Now, I have the glass. Now... The, you notice that you also have an occlusion roughness metallic channel, and you also have a normal channel. Now, if you painted a layer uh, where we painted the brown glass, and you put actually window dividers in it, okay, then you'll probably want to create your roughness and your metallic and all that kind of stuff, and a normal channel to give it that 3D 3d look of your window frames okay in this exercise we're not doing that we're just making a simple pane of glass that's that's brown and we're going to overlay that onto our parallax living room okay so i got to make sure that we have everything set so we have our glass image and we also have our living room itself and um, we want to come up to the emissive color and I'm going to select emissive color and I'm going to bring that up in brightness here I'm going to don't want it too too bright and then I'm going to kind of give it its brown kind of hue in a way okay And then I got to double check, make sure that alpha clip is set, opaque for shadows, and turn off back face culling. And we'll leave everything the same here, okay? Now, we could do double-sided, like if you're inside the room, you would see inside the room again when you're looking out. So that's why I kept double sided off. If I'm inside the room, I don't want to see the room when I'm looking outside the window. Okay. So we have that set. So let's go back to layout. Okay. And we have our window. Our, our scale is set. Now we need to export this. Now, you'll notice that I'll have parallax window 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5, all right? Because I, you can make different Blender files for different rooms, okay? So I have a couple rooms uh, that I've already made. 
and when you create a building you can import those blender files of those rooms and place them and scale them in your building where those rooms would be like for a skyscraper or something like that okay so that's why you're going to see multiple parallax windows one two three four five and then i think i'm going to make this one six so we're going to go sa uh, file save and we're going to call this window six and we're going to save that blender file now we're going to set up our export environment i'm going to use the multi exporter but i need before since this is a new uh new blender file i need to do some presets here so i'm going to go to file export gltf that way i can get the format menu and i'm going to change that to separate gltf bin and textures and I am going to give it a dot dot slash texture. Is that right? Texture. That's the folder that I want it to be in, in my model lib uh, textures folder. And I want to remember, I'm going to selected custom punctual transform. I want apply my modifiers tangent doesn't work you don't need it and everything is set for that and we're going to do its initial export and if i open up our model lib for the parallax window you notice that i have parallax window two three four five and six okay but i want to i want to export this out to just parallax window okay no i mean parallax window bin gltf and xml okay so i want to change this file name to just say parallax window delete that okay now you can leave it with whatever uh, name that you give it but I'm just overwriting the model to bring it into the sim. That's all I'm doing. And so we're going to do its initial export. So if we look at our current export, we are at today at 11.09. It's 11.36 right now. So I am going to export. Okay, and then let's look at our tree again. See if it has the right time, 1137. Okay, so the bin has been updated to the current time. The GLTF, the XML wasn't, but that's okay. We're going to do another export here in a second that should take care of that. All right, now we're going to go to the multi exporter. And now we're going to use the parallax window setup. So I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to dot dot slash texture. You only have to do this twice the first time that you make a model. Okay. Okay, and we're going to include custom and punctual lights, transform, and add modifiers. Then I'm going to go to objects. I'm going to group by collection so I have it automatically names it parallax window for me. Generate the XML. And I need a path. And my path is the parallax window uh, in my model lib. So I accept that. And then I'm going to check the level of detail but i'm not going to change the actual detail this just tells me to create the xml with the parallax window name is basically what i'm doing and then i'm going to export then if i open up we should have 
1138, 1139 or something like that. We have 1138 for the bin, 38 for the GLTF, and then 38 for the XML now. Okay. Now, hopefully this works. <laughs> so we're going to go to 5 Alpha 1 project folder, select the 5 Alpha 1 XML, and left click and drag that onto the FS package tool. So I build it outside of the sim, and it's working on the left, my, my screen that's on the left here. It's building, it's creating the DDS image of our glass and the GLTF, okay? And we're done with zero failed. So I can hit any key to continue. Now I'm gonna go into the sim and see if this thing works, okay? So I'm gonna minimize my blender and start the sim and I'll be right back. Okay, we're in the sim. I turned off my image because, you know, it freezes up anyway. I don't have, you know, top-notch graphics card, all that kind of stuff. I have a good one, but anyway, it saves. Turning me off, you guys don't need to see me anyway. So we're going to go to project. We're going to open project. And we're going to choose our 5 Alpha 1 Airport. That's my guinea pig. I'm going to open that. Then we're going to go and open the BGL. And load that into the editor. And then in our objects, we should have the parallax window show up. Which is the object that we created. One click placing. Ah. I didn't rotate it. <laughs> so it'll look a little goofy. All right. I didn't rotate my model and I, I will we'll fix that. Okay. <laughs> Our building sideways. All right. So I'm going to click there. Uncheck one click placing. And there we have a room. Now if I pan let's go up a little bit here if I pan notice that our room kind of appears to be 3d even though even though I have my room sideways the parallax is working okay it gives that 3d uh, appearance to it okay but what we're going to do is I'm going to try to update this. So I'm going to go into Blender. And I'm going to go to UV Editing. And I'm going to select all. Come over here to our UV Editor. And rotate that. I can't remember which way. Let's go... Rotate minus 90. Okay. I don't know if this is going to work or not. I, I don't know if I have to rebuild or not. All right. So now I'm going to go into layout. I'm just testing. All right. So I'm going to go into layout. I'm going to do a save. I'm going to re-export. I'm going to move Blender off of the screen here for a second. Okay. No, uh, notice it hasn't updated in the sim. So I'm going to go to my package sources, model lib, uh, parallax window, choose the GLTF, right click, open that in Notepad++, minimize this. And I am simply going to hit space, backspace, and then hit save. It did rotate it, but not, a, not <laughs> without seeing the image. 
it did rotate it some okay it does some weird kind of stuff oh there's two parallax I forgot there's two parallax uh, UV um, maps so I need to rotate both of those so go back into because now I have two my two UVs are competing against each other so we're going to go to the in blender go to the second UV map select that go into the UV editor okay so I have the second UV map selected select all rotate that one minus 90 go back into layout do a save let's uh, do another export go back in and reopen the GLTF to see if we can get a live update here's our XML I'm going to hit space backspace do a save see if that helps us minimize 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 Oh, I went I rotated it the wrong direction <laughs> now, now our room is upside down all right all right let's do this one more time I'm gonna rotate everything 180 degrees <laughs> I'm such an idiot all right let's go back into blender go back into UV editing select our first UV map hit a rotate 180 okay select our second UV map hit a rotate 180 okay go back into layout do a save and do a new export okay get out of blender see it we're upside down so hopefully this works now now we're going to go back into our GL, we're going to reopen our GLTF in Notepad++. And we're going to hit, oops, yes, I want the new one. And we're going to hit space, backspace, and then do a save. And that should update the sim again. So let's uh, minimize this, minimize that. And now our room is right side up okay so you saw how to fix some uv maps okay but make sure that you change both uv maps that you have but this gives us now the appearance of a 3d room okay now the image is a perspective it's the original perspective of the living room all right and it maps that to a 2d plane Okay. okay. All right. Now, if we go in, if we're in the sim and we change to nighttime, there we have a lighted room at night. Okay. Based on the emission settings in our in our um, project okay or our material okay so I'm gonna get out of the sim so you see that parallax does work you can uh, use different images for different rooms and map that plane map this you know import this into your project and map it to whatever windows that you want to light up okay so I am gonna I'm not going to save this. Yeah, no, I'm not going to save my project because this is my guinea pig. But I would save my project if it was real. Okay, and then rebuild it. Or, or rebuild it and then, yeah, save it and then rebuild it. Okay, but I'm just going to close for now. 
and then we'll get out of the sim and I'll be right back there so we are out of the sim and we're back in blender so to rehash create a collection the name of the the object that I want to create in this case parallax window and I um, UV unwrap my my plane and I create a new material and I select MSFS parameters and I choose parallax I give it a miss of color and then based on the images that you use you map the actual room to the behind the glass and you map the window itself to the front glass color and then if you create window frames and all that and you have um, create a normal layer uh, a, a normal image and a, an occlusion roughness and metallic image you can map those here to give you your uh, three-dimensional look of your window frames and stuff like that so uh, don't forget a couple important settings is the parallax scale uh, I just set that to 0.8 for now and I, I've I really haven't messed with the X scale and the Y scale um, but you could play around with that and see what kind of uh, changes it makes to your image now to be honest with you, it's not going to be a perfect parallax, okay? There's some, there's some quirkiness to this parallax instead of the powerful parallax settings that you have when you're doing native rendering in Blender. But if we come over here and we have our material selected and we go to the shader editor you'll notice that it automatically creates a uh, node setup and this is automatically generated when you create it um, these are complicated okay because parallax is very math oriented it I mean it's math intensive because basically what parallax is doing in nodes is the image that you bring in every image has a coordinate for every pixel that's in it and based on the viewing angle determines where it each pixel its depth its its location is mapped to okay it's extremely math intensive or geometry you know all the different angles and stuff of light and and all that kind of stuff and that's what it automatically does it it uses the UVs it uh, uses some coordinate uh, uh, coordinate inputs based on the camera camera angle in the sim or in blender itself to determine where each pixel in your image is going to appear so very complicated I didn't want to take the uh, make a video of just talking about that because um, there are other people out there that are way more qualified than I am to talk about parallax but that's basically what it's doing but don't let this uh, intimidate you when you're using the uh, MSFS parameter for parallax okay so that's a simple parallax window um, if you wanted to bring in another image uh, let's say this is one room and then we had another room right next to it I can just import another blender file or append another blender file uh, to this model and have two different rooms and each one will have its own parallax okay so that should get you started in doing a parallax uh, window in the sim 
So find an image of a room that's uh, a good perspective view of a room and play with it. Play with the scale and all that kind of stuff. And let me know what you come up with in yours. Okay? Leave some comments. Please subscribe if you haven't. And if you feel inclined to support me, buymeacoffee.com slash myphysicalworld. I also have a Patreon page, My Physical World. And uh, visit my uh, myphysicalworld.gumroad.com store. I have some free assets that I'm starting to load in there for you. And I will see you guys on the next video. See you later.